Okay, sketch the graph of the following functions for the maximum domains. So we've got y equals cos to the minus 1 of 2 minus 3x. I think the easiest way to sketch these is to um, sketch them as, to sketch your original graph. So if you sketch a normal inverse cos graph or arc cos graph, then you'll get something that uh, looks like this. So remember it's between negative 1 and 1. So this is an unshifted graph and it goes up to pi. So the negative 1 pi um, comes down to 1, 0 and it will go through 0 pi on 2. So that's pi, that's pi on 2 and it looks like this. If you ever have trouble about the curves, I just imagine, um, and I'll rub this bit out, I just imagine it's like a cos graph going like that, just back like that, and that sort of gets me the shape of the curve that I'm after. So you're drawing the cos graph but doing it on the y-axis rather than the x. So that's one there, there's x, there's y. Okay, now... How is this going to be shifted? Well, let's write it in a fashion that might be a bit more useful. So if we um, always, you always want to get a single x in the, in, um, in the bracket. So we're going to have um, negative, one, negative 3 will come out. Okay, so you'll have negative 3 and you'll have, um, you, you want that to equal um, 2. So obviously the three is going to cancel out and you're going to have the two like that. So you've got two thirds. So if you multiply that out, that'll give me um, minus two and I want positive two. So that's a negative two, uh, negative two thirds, and that becomes plus X. Okay. So now what I can see is, okay, so what do the various bits do? So the, the, um, the 3 is a dilation by a factor of a third, dilation by a factor one third from the y-axis. Okay. Um, the negative that's in front here, the negative, that's a reflection in the y-axis. And remember the order of that you do things is important. So there, the, it doesn't matter which way you do those two, um, but you must do them before the translation. And then you've got a translation of what makes the bracket zero. So positive two thirds, translation of two thirds. I'll just go to the right. Obviously, if you were writing that out fully, you'd write in the positive direction of the X axis. So if we do that and we sketch this up here again. So now um, I've dilated it by a, a factor of a third. So if I, oh, I might do the reflection in the y-axis first. So if I did the reflection in the y-axis, I would get that. Okay. But if I've dilated by a factor of a third, I'm not going to be between negative one and one um, from the y-axis. I'm going to be between negative a third and a third. So they're going to come in that way, aren't they? So I'll just sort of rub that out so we don't get too many lines. Um, and that's looking like that. So that's now, it's still, it's not really skinny enough, is it? So that's minus a third and that's a third. That's still pi on two. That's still pi, nothing's moved there. And now I'm going to shift um, everything over two thirds to the right. So I'm going to redraw that again. And this will look like this. So if you move this so everything across two thirds, what was at negative a third? I should put the negative sign in there. What was at negative third now becomes at add two thirds to it becomes one third. The um, point that was at negative third now goes to one. Obviously, the shape doesn't change. And that would be pi there. So put some n coordinates on it. That would be um, one pi 
that would be zero one third. Uh, sorry, one third zero. This would be um, instead of zero pi on two. Remember, you've moved it across two thirds, so that'll be two thirds pi on two. You might want to just label that two thirds pi on two. Its domain is one third to pi inclusive and its range um, is zero to pi. So it all should look pretty straightforward when you do it. You'll find that you confuse yourself with the ones and the negative ones when you do it initially, and that's okay. Um, one thing I can point out to you too, that if you look at the bracket up here for um, cos to the minus one, this part in here, we know when we do an inverse cos that that bracket has to be between negative one and one. So if you take the inverse cos, when you take the cos of a number, it's always between, um, the range is between negative one and one. So if you're doing an inverse cos, then, then the bracket needs to be between negative one and one. So if you want a nice sort of little algebraic approach to do the domain, you can just write in uh, two minus three X is greater than um, or equal to negative one and less than or equal to one. And now just do the um, algebra that that's, um, goes with that. So we can go minus three X is greater than or equal to minus three X. Okay. Uh, is greater than or equal to, so you're subtracting 2, so between minus 3 and minus 1. So that's subtracting 2 from both endpoints. Um, and now you're dividing by negative 3. So x is, now don't forget when you divide by a negative number, you've got to reverse the sign. So that becomes um, 1, and that becomes a third. Now, we don't normally write things with the greater than, we normally write them the other way around. So it'll be X will be greater than or equal to a third and less than or equal to one. And you can see from our graph um, that that domain is, is correct. But that gives you a nice little algebra approach to it. Um, I'll do part B, I think, just as a separate little video.